percentage yield. So we're going to take a look at our basic stoichiometry, but add in to those calculations a percentage calculation, which can be done if you're talking about yield at the end of it, the, the yield of the actual reaction. Or we'll look at percentage purity, where you're doing that same idea of a calculation, the percentage calculation at the beginning. So again, we use stoichiometry to calculate uh, theoretical yield. So it is theoretically what you could get out of that particular reaction going in with those products. The amount that you actually get, though, isn't calculated. You actually have to actually do the experiment. And so, appropriately enough, this is called the actual yield. The percentage yield compares those two values. The actual yield is always going to be a portion of the whole theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is your maximum amount. That's If, if everything went perfectly, that's how much you'd get. In reality, your actual yield is going to be less than that. So the actual yield will always be a fraction of the theoretical yield, and then we can express that percentage or that fraction as a percentage, and it'll tell you how much of your theoretical yield you actually got. Now, it's possible you could get a higher than 100% theoretical yield if there's some other error happening. For example, if what you think is your product actually has other stuff in it, let's say it's like not a wet or something like that, um, then its mass might be higher. And so you'd, you'd imagine that your actual yield is higher or you'd, you'd think that it is, but it's not the actual product that you're talking about there. And so if you have zero errors, um, your actual yield should be less than your theoretical yield. And again, um, this is this is based on the in fact that not everything's going to go perfectly during the reaction. So some of the things that can go wrong that will give you less than 100% would be that um, you may actually lose um, some of the, the actual product in during the reaction. So you can, you, you're making this product, but you might not be able to catch it all to actually measure how much you have. And so therefore you think you have less, even though you didn't make it, you don't know where it is. Um, the reactants themselves may be impure. So if you think you're reacting like 10 grams of something, but it's got some other stuff in there, so it's really only nine grams of that stuff, but you put into your calculation 10 grams, um, you'd be expecting a certain amount, but you'd get less than that. So the purity of the reactants is gonna bring down your percentage yield as well. Um, and then side reactions. So you may think you're doing one reaction, but something might happen, um, either maybe an alternative reaction, or maybe your products go through a different reaction. So you make these products and then something happens to them, they're not your products anymore. So that would bring down your percentage yield bring down your actual yield versus your theoretical. And also thing um, that we're gonna look at probably later is gonna be this thing called equilibrium. And this is where you have some of the products may reverse. And so you, you think you've made a certain amount of them, but then they start running backwards through the reaction and they start reforming some of the reactants. Therefore you'd have less of them. And that would bring down your actual yield and also your percentage yield. So stoichiometry will only ever give you a theoretical yield. Stoichiometry is doing the calculation part of it. So that is not going to give you your actual yield. You actually have to do the experiment to get your actual yield. Stoichiometry will give you a theoretical yield. Your, your, your ideal situation based on the numbers, just running through the mass, math, that will give you your theoretical yield. So if you want to know your actual yield, you have to have some additional data. You can either do the experiment yourself or you could get the data from someone who has. So let's say we had nitrogen and hydrogen reacting to form ammonia. Um, so this is our, our Haber process here. How many grams? And so we want to find this. Um, it's a gas, so it'd be a little hard to get, get grams of it. Let's imagine we're, we're going with um, the production of ammonia. We liquefy it, we weigh it, um, and we want to find out how many grams will be produced if we started with 75 grams of nitrogen. And we won't do a limiting reactant question. So we'll have just excess hydrogen, however much we need, will be there. So this part we've done many times, 75 grams of nitrogen. And again, we use the molar mass of nitrogen to get to moles of nitrogen. We use the two to one mole ratio from the equation to go from moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia. Moles of ammonia, we want to, it's asking for um, what is the mass of ammonia. So we've got to get rid of moles of ammonia and go to mass. And so that's going to carry through to our units. We pick up our calculator, run it through, we should end up with 90.01 grams of ammonia. So nothing new there, straight up stoichiometry. This is the percent part. So imagine someone did this, this reaction and they only got 17.2 grams of ammonia out of the reaction itself. So they were expecting to get 90.1, sorry, 91.0 grams of ammonia, and they only actually got, when they carried it the reaction, they actually got, for a whole bunch of different reasons, only 17.2 grams of ammonia. So we can now express that as a percentage. 
And like any percent calculation, it's essentially a portion over a whole. The portion that we actually got is 17.2. And so we're gonna express that as a portion of the whole 91 that we theoretically could have gotten. That will give us our percentage um, out of one. No one likes to see numbers smaller than one. And so what we do is you multiply that out of 100, a lot easier to look at that way. So we're doing a percentage calculation. And again, like any percentage calculation, it is the portion over the whole multiplied by 100 because we like to see things out of 100. Easy for our heads to wrap around that. So 17 is our 17.2 grams is our portion. 91.0 grams is the whole. And again, that's basically the actual divided by the theoretical. Units of grams cancel out. We're going to multiply by that by 100. And so you end up with an 18.9% yield. So this example here, we've got calcium carbonate and calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, or producing calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, um, making some quick lime here. Um, so we're heating up the calcium carbonate, drive out that carbon dioxide, and we can make that calcium oxide. This reaction proceeds. So here is a slightly different version giving you the percent yield to start off with. So if you've got this master, if you did it lots of times, and you find that every time you do it, you only get a 92.4% yield, then you can start predicting how many grams of one of the products are we going to obtain? So we're gonna run the reaction with 12.4 grams of reactant, and we're gonna see how much product we get. The calculation will give us a theoretical yield, but we know that we're only ever gonna get, for whatever reason, only 92.4% of that theoretical yield. So then we can determine how much we actually got. So we're using some previous existing knowledge about the reaction's percentage yield to find out how much we'd actually get in this case. Same thing before, we've got to find the theoretical yield of the product. So, same thing, start with your mass of your calcium carbonate. Um, mass is going to be gone, go to moles, we're going to convert from moles of calcium carbonate to moles of calcium oxide, one to one ratio, and then we want to work in mass, because we're dealing with masses here, um, and so we can convert to the mass of the calcium oxide um, by getting rid of moles of calcium. So this should give us are 6.95 grams of calcium oxide produced. Now realize this is what we got from the math, right? Running through the stoichiometry of it. So this is not the actual yield. This is our theoretical yield. Then we can use that to say, okay, we can actually do the experiment and find out what we actually get. But if we, as long as we know that the percentage yield is always consistent, we can use that. And essentially what we need to do is say, okay, that's the theoretical yield. We know we get 92.4%, there it is, um, as our percentage yield every time. We know that in this particular case, 6.95 is our theoretical yield. So we're solving for the actual yield. Another version of this might give us the actual yield and the percentage, and we'd solve for the theoretical yield. But here we're looking for the actual yield. So essentially what is 92.4% of 6.95? And of course, you can take 6.95 and multiply by 0.924, or feel free to rearrange the equation to get that. You would end up with 6.42 grams of calcium oxide as your actual yield. Percentage purity is the same idea in that you are using a percent calculation, but we're not looking at the percentage yield. We're not looking at the product side to do that percent calculation. We're looking at the purity of the reactants going in. So instead of doing it at the end of the reaction, we're doing it at the beginning of the reaction. And you can calculate backwards or forwards through the reaction, so it's not necessarily when you're um, dealing with the numbers, but these are going to be applying to the actual reactants. So, as you would imagine, even ivory soap is not 100% pure. There's always going to be some other things that are in there. It is very impossible, actually, to get anything that's 100% pure. Um, and, and so, therefore, we're going to be dealing with reactants that are sometimes less than one, well, always less than 100% pure. If we know what they are, we can actually factor that into our calculations. So if you know that you have 10 grams of some reactant, but it's only 90% pure, then you can factor that into your calculation. Say, okay, well, I don't actually have 10 grams. It weighs 10 grams, but it's only 90% pure. So I only have nine grams of that stuff. So again, you can do that percent calculation, but the numbers are easy. You can do it ahead, but you've always got your percentage formula, portion over a whole, the actual over the total. If we had 15 grams of sodium hydroxide, that is only 95% pure. So we don't actually have 16.0 grams of sodium hydroxide because some of it is not sodium hydroxide. You got some other stuff in there. Um, and so we want to know how many grams of water will be produced. Since we know the purity of the reactants, 
We know if we weigh out 15 grams, it won't be all sodium hydroxide. So we need to find out how much is actually sodium hydroxide. Then we'll do the stoichiometry with that. So here's our equation that is, is being um, going through the reaction, sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. And we know that the 15 grams is only 95% pure. So I have turned that 95 into a decimal. I want to find out what is 95% of 15 grams. And of course, the answer there is 14.25 grams of sodium hydroxide. So that's how much we're actually running through the reaction. The other stuff's just going to sit there. So normal stoichiometry, go to moles, convert from moles of what you have to moles of what you want. Moles of what you want um, is going to be converted in this case to mass because it's asking for the answer in mass. And so you end up with 6.42 grams of water produced from this sodium hydroxide.